If there's one thing that every single scuba diver and snorkeler has on in the water, it's a mask and hopefully a bathing suit too. Uh, scuba masks are different from swimming goggles because of that pesky pressure differential and Boyle's law. Thanks, Boyle. So scuba diving masks all have a nose pocket so that we can equalize the airspace inside the mask. And they also have a flat piece of glass so that we can actually see underwater. Some people are quite happy to open their eyes underwater without a mask, but our eyes just aren't physically made to focus underwater, so they don't really work correctly and everything you see is fuzzy because you just can't focus. With a little amount of air in front of your eyes and a flat piece of glass, your eyes can actually focus. So because every diver needs a mask to see and function properly underwater, it's pretty important that you know how to use your mask properly and fix any problems that may occur. Mask skills comprise most of the skills that you actually learn on your first diving course, but of course it's very important to keep these skills fresh and up to date so that should the worst happen, you're ready and that you truly have mastered your mask skills. The first skill that you need to learn once you've found a mask that fits properly is actually preparing your new mask. Masks that come straight out of the factory need to be prepared for use so that they don't fog up instantly. And there are many, many different methods that range from pastes that kind of draw out these release agents that cause the glass to fog up to literally burning them off with a cigarette lighter, which has always seemed a tad extreme for me. Um, and you can, you know, really ruin your mask. The big two methods that we recommend is some kind of off-the-shelf treatment uh, and good old-fashioned toothpaste. Off-the-shelf treatments are, of course, made to prepare your mask so that they fog up less, but uh, do your research first. If your mask has any kind of treated lens, do your spot tests and try it on a small little corner of the glass first and be very, very gentle to avoid any kind of scratching or damaging that coating. Basic white toothpaste with no special whitening crystals or granules also does the job pretty well, but the trick is to apply it and then leave it to dry. The drying kind of draws out these release agents out of the glass and then just repeat it as often as you need to at least a few times. Now that you've prepared your mask, you can actually go diving. Only you now need to prepare your mask before you actually jump in. Your mask unfortunately will still fog up even after you've prepared it initially. It just not as much now that you've prepared it. Before every single dive, you need to use a temporary treatment to stop it from fogging up. And for this, you have kind of three different choices. Off the shelf kind of treatments, baby shampoo and spit. Spit is an easy one that you kind of always have with you, uh, but it's a bit gross and uh, it doesn't always work for everybody. You can find gels and sprays off the shelf which do work very well, uh, but of course there's that additional cost and you can leave it at home. And then there's watered down baby shampoo, uh, which is of course no more tears, so that's a bonus. Uh, but you do have to explain that big bottle of baby shampoo in your kit bag sometimes. It's a bit weird, yeah. It's like dive knife and then all these bolt snaps and stuff and then it's like Johnson's and Johnson's, no more tears. <laughs> Preparing and defogging your mask is probably the most important skill to learn so that you can actually see what you're doing underwater. Putting your mask on doesn't sound like much of a skill, but some divers still do it wrong. The first thing that many scuba divers do is leave some hair left underneath the ceiling skirt. Now I know this is ironic coming from a diver with a beard, uh, but any hair underneath that mask skirt will break that seal and let a little bit of water in. If your mask just keeps filling up with water, then chances are that some hair is just letting the air out and water trickling in. So before you even put your mask on, just brush that hair away. And uh, when your mask is actually on, check the skirt for hair. And if you have a beard, just use some kind of wax or something to create a seal over your top lip. Another cause of leaks is actually over tightening the strap. For some divers, their first reaction to a little bit of water in their mask is to tighten that mask strap because, well, it must be loose, surely. Actually, it's the opposite. Over tightening your mask can actually deform the mask skirt so it doesn't seal properly. You're actually making things worse for yourself. And after the dive, you just get out and you look like a raccoon with red marks all over your face. So it's not a good look. 
Your mask should sit gently on your face with minimal pressure. If you're only splashing around on the surface, then a pair of normal swimming goggles is fine. But as soon as you start to swim down, you can do some real damage to your eyes because if we go back to Boyle's law, the deeper down you go, the airspace actually shrinks and it will suck the eyes out of your sockets. With a nose pocket, you can just exhale out of your nose at depth and this will to add a bit of additional air and that will equalize that airspace so you don't hurt yourself. And it's the basis for quite a lot of the mask skills actually, just the simple act of breathing out of your nose. Equalizing your mask as you descend is as easy as exhaling through your nose. Every now and then just kind of exhale a little bit as you go down and your mask will be equalized. Any excess will just kind of bubble out, but try not to do this too much during the rest of the dive. It's fine to do it as you descend to sort of equalize your mask, to equalize that pressure, but if you do it too much during your dive, it will just help make your mask fog up even faster because you're just exhaling warm, humid gas into your mask and that's just gonna condense and fog up. As great as mask skirts is at sealing around your face, we all have different shaped faces and we kind of move them around a lot so you can't really complain when a little bit of water gets in your mask. Every time you smile a little bit underwater or adjust the regulator in your mouth, you change the sealing surface of the mask which can let some water in. This isn't always a bad thing because you can use that small amount of water inside your mask to actually clear a fogged mask, but it's important that you can then get rid of this water out of the mask after you've done with it because it can both irritate your eyes, your nose as well, and that just means that it's gonna be harder to equalize your ears properly. Um, so yeah, try to get rid of it if you can. The trick to clearing water out of your mask is just airway control and correct sealing. If you put any amount of air into your mask, it will naturally push any water out of the bottom. It's called displacement. The key is to keep the top seal around your mask in place so that air can't escape anywhere but the bottom. And just inhale through your mouth and exhale through your nose. Don't lift the bottom of your mask away from your face because that's just gonna let even more water in, but keep the top of your mask against your forehead and just exhale out of your nose long and slow. Practicing flooding and clearing your mask is actually quite good for you so you don't get caught out if something bad happens and that way it just won't take you by surprise because you do this all the time. The more you do it, the better your airway control will be and clearing your mask will get easier and easier. The first time that you clear your mask, it may take a few tries because it hmm, takes a little while, but you'll get better at it and that small amount of water in your mask won't be a big deal because you just get rid of it. Looking after your mask between dives is as much of a skill that you learn over time. You can't just throw your mask in your kit bag or just hang it up on a hook after a dive. If you look after a mask, then it will last for years, but if you abuse it, it'll only last about a season or so. Leaving your mask without washing and drying it means that tiny little nasties will start to grow inside and unless you can physically disassemble your mask, which only a rare few masks actually can be disassembled, you can have a hard time cleaning it out properly. Just casting your mask aside and leaving it in your kit bag can really damage pretty much all parts of it. The glass can scratch and even shatter, the buckles can twist and break, and the silicone skirt can just be pinched or pulled, creating rips and holes. So take the time to put your mask away properly after a dive. A safe place to put your mask between dives if you're caught short can be the foot pocket of your fins. Just, you know, remember to take it out and put it away somewhere properly afterwards. Storing your mask long term between dives should be in a dark place and ideally in its natural shape. By scrunching your mask up in a case, it can actually leave it like that so that when you pull it out next time, it can be a little bit misshapen and messed up. Keep it out of direct sunlight because UV light can actually damage the skirt and try and keep it away from any extreme heat and cold. Too hot or too cold can actually damage your mask, so keep it in like a closet in the house not the attic or the garden shed, just somewhere nice, treat, treat it good.
The worst can and will happen on a dive, and this is where practicing your mask skills is essential. The worst thing that can probably happen to your mask in the water is for a lens to literally fall out. Anything else is fairly manageable. Rip your mask and you can just kind of hold it against your face. Lose your mask or just get it knocked off. You can always recover it and put it back on. But if you lose it for good and it just disappears down to the abyss, or if your lens actually pops out, then the final mask skill that you should really learn and learn it really well is to bring a backup mask. A second mask can solve a lot of problems for you and any other diver in the water. Most advanced divers actually dive with a second mask in their pocket just in case. You can do a lot of things in the water like missing a fin or with a malfunctioning regulator. It's not the end of the world, but not being able to see can really make things tricky. So you better trust that your buddy control both you and his buoyancy to do a stop if neither of you have a backup mask. At the end of your dive, after you've done your safety stop, or if you've got something to control your buoyancy like a trapeze, then practice the odd mask skill whilst you're there. You've got nothing else to do except watch that number countdown. So you can train your body so that it's better used to water being around your eyes and nose. That way, if the worst should ever happen, it's less of a shock to you and you'll be calm and collected. So, oh, okay just clear my mask. You can do this at the very, very start of your dive because you don't have to worry about decompression quite yet, but then you have to compete with salt water in and around your eyes throughout the entire dive, and you can't rub your eyes on the dive unless you take your mask off again, and that just makes it worse. So are you a mask guru? Are you fairly savvy with your mask skills? Or did you struggle with mask skills at first? What's your preferred mask preparation technique too? Let's discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching and safe diving. Well, I know, reading your computer manual is probably some awful bedtime reading and it will put Junior down in record time, but it is important that when a symbol pops up or a TLA kind of shows its face on the screen, that you understand what your computer is trying to tell you. This is why you need to be one with your dive computer.